And I'd like to ask Mr. Beeston, since we go back <laughs> such a long way, and we mentioned that we negotiated contracts for a long time. I was always constantly pounding on his desk demanding a six-month contract. He would only go for one. <laughs> and we had a lot of contentious negotiations over the years. But seriously, Paul, in this off-season, of course, there was a lot of talk about the Blue Jays. 81 and 81, a lot of success. A lot of the fans felt that it was just a matter of a player or two to get them into that same realm of competition with the Rays and the Red Sox and the Yankees. And there were some prominent free agents out there. The Blue Jays were linked to several of those. But over the years, and having been here since 1981, I understand that the philosophy has always been to minimize the length of contracts. Pat Gillick started out that way. But how did the organizational philosophy of long-term contracts and trying to make sure you don't get bogged down by long-term contracts, how did that play in the negotiations or the possible negotiations or consideration for a guy like Prince Fielder? Fielder had natural ties here. His father played here. First baseman with power, left-handed bat, a lot of things that would appeal to this team. But address how the Blue Jays approached thinking about the possibility of adding a Prince Fielder. Well, I don't think there's anybody, um, Albert, that didn't want to have someone like Prince Fielder on your team. I mean, Prince Fielder um, is a special talent. Um, he hits home runs, he plays great first base, he was great at the clubhouse in, in Milwaukee. Um, his agent, Scott Boris, I think may have been, let it be known uh, that he was looking for anywhere from, a, from an eight to a ten-year contract and really wanted a, a ten-year contract. That doesn't fit in with our philosophy. That's the problem. Um, and rightly or wrongly, and some people say you should change your philosophies, but you change it for one person, you change it for everybody. Because you're negotiating with people and you say, we don't give over five years. You know, at that point in time, you start losing your credibility. And one of the things that you want to make sure that you have in this game is credibility. The credibility we have is that when we say this is what our maximum contract will be, that's what we're going to have to live up to. So our contract maximum is now five years. It used to be three, but it's five years right now. Because we do not want to, you know, tie our hands as to what we're doing in the future. And Prince Fielder is 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 a terrific talent. Prince Fielder, I remember him when he was when he was at the when Exhibition Stadium. Um, he seemed as big back then as he does right now. Uh, but having said that. Prince Fielder was looking for the long-term contract that we would not commit to. If it was a one-year deal, we would have been there. If it had been a three-year deal, we would have been there. If it had been a five-year deal, we might have been there. Once got over that, that did not make a whole bunch of sense for the Toronto Blue Jays, given where we want to go and what we want to do and give our options into the future. But the five years, it's not the money, it's not the annual value. There's a value that you put on something. If you want to make sure that you have the ability to manage your team so that we can deliver what you want, which is that championship team on a perennial basis that is the direction that we went so that was the that was the philosophy behind it that's the policy that we have and that's the commitment we have to our players because the day we start losing the commitment to the players the day that they say look at they change it to suit their own means the day that they suit it because you know somebody's writing about it or somebody's on broadcast about it or some fans are saying that or whatever it is then we lose our credibility we like players but I mean, we have to be very careful that we make sure that we carry through well, what our commitments have been. So that's where we are. That's a philosophy, rightly or wrongly, it actually works out because people actually start believing it. And what we need to do, and this is the job of Alex and John, we went on the field and then the migration of the players will come here. I mean, it shouldn't be lost on anybody. The migration of the number one free agents on an annual basis migrate to the teams that think that or, or have, a, have, a, have a, a real good chance of winning. So, you know, from our point of view, we've got to be there. We've got to say, this is a place that you want to play. This is the city you want to play in. These are the fans you want to play in front of. And, you know, you've got 50,000 people in here cheering you on, and then they come. we got to win. That's number one. But it's still not going to change that policy because changing that policy I think is going to put you in a position where you lose credibility with everybody that you've talked to before that.